All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Too Many Hobbies podcast. This is the first guest of season three, and I have my buddy Joel Clements on. He's Log Dog Fishing on TikTok. If you guys follow, follow him there already, if you don't, be sure to follow him. Joel, welcome to the show. Hey, Brian. How's it going, man? Good, man. I'm pumped that you're on. Joel and I met through TikTok, actually. We ended up yeah. going fishing together, two complete strangers, and had a banger of a day out on the lake. And uh, Joel's done a ton of really cool walleye fishing content on Lake Erie, a lot of how how to videos, perch fishing, and uh, just basically everything Lake Erie. But you're not from very close to here, so what brought you to the lake? Um, you know, it's one of the things like you can go back to, you know, I've fished. You know, my whole childhood going out with dad and stuff like that. We started out cat fishing and everything. And uh, one thing that we always did was we'd come up and we'd get on a headboat. Him and his buddies, that was what we did. we come up here, get on like the Fisherman's Wharf or uh, Drawbridge, you know. And we'd go out and uh, cast harnesses for walleye. Um, so that's like where it kind of started. And I was just a kid when we would go and stuff. You can you can go actually on Drawbridge's Facebook page, and I think they still have like our group picture at the top. Because like <laughs> towards the end of uh, getting on the headboats and stuff, uh, I decided that like man, I just I, I want to get my own boat, you know. So that's where that's where I kind of started coming up here. All we did was cast harnesses. And uh, I tell you what, too, like when we come up here and do that and get on a headboat, we took it so serious. Um, I remember being a kid and I was just so pumped to go that right before we got on the headboat, I was like, man, I got to use the bathroom. And I was like, well, I'll just go when I when I get out there, you know, and then like oh, yeah, the head yeah. and uh Man, I, I remember that day like we we sat on that headboat and I fished so hard that I didn't go to the bathroom the whole time I was out there. You know, <laughs> we fished so hard like we would we didn't take any breaks, we didn't eat food. Um, I remember getting on them headboats and my dad and his buddies would go up to the captain. And they're like, "We're here to catch fish, you know. I don't care if we got to go two hours on a headboat ride." And them captains would, man. I remember the one time we did we did a two hour trip out of uh i can't remember if it was the wharf or if it was the drawbridge but you know like we went in between uh kelly's and the islands you know canadian line from port clinton definitely like a two-hour trip out there but especially on those boats too yeah right (laughs) big old diesel just like (laughs) bogging away through the lake heck yeah Yeah. but no that's how uh, i started coming up here and everything um I remember we'd do that and everything. And it was usually like once a year, sometimes twice a year. And what happened, like I would be on the boat and everything, we'd be done. And the older I got and everything, I remember like when the trip was over, I'd be so bummed that we were leaving that lake, you know? And, uh, and I told myself like, man, I gotta, I gotta be able to come up here more. So, and, and that's where I got into like my first boat and everything. And, started coming up here on my own and all that so then your dad when did your dad buy a boat same time that you did or did he already have a boat early on after you guys started doing the headboat trips um so like we grew up always boating dad had a speedboat they bought mom and dad bought a brand new speedboat in 1998 so every weekend we uh that was our thing man we were on the lake boating at my local lake and stuff and then dad always had like a little 14 foot V bottom with a nine, nine on it and stuff. <laughs> um, and then, you know, from there we went to like uh he had a flat bottom, uh 17 foot smoker craft with a 25 okay. horse. And that was our fishing boat. You know, it had little Minn Kota on trolling motor on the front and the 25 tiller. So yeah, when I got into that low, my first boat, that was really the first boat to be able to go out on Erie with. Got it. Okay. And that's a 17 foot, right? That was, uh, it was a 165, uh, okay. FM. FM was for fishing machine. It was 16 foot 
eight inches and it had a 60 horse on 60 horse oh, dang. i bought it new it was a it's a it was a 2016 yeah wow i mean things have changed that boat that boat was eighteen thousand dollars you know it's a and, thirty thousand uh, dollar boat now <laughs> yeah I mean, just in like 2016 it's crazy you know you yeah. couldn't buy that boat today no but yeah that's, that's that was the start so then at what point did your dad upgrade his boat? Because I know you upgraded your boat in what, 2018, 2019? Mine's a, the, the boat I have now is a 21. So, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So the story behind that is that I had the low, okay? And and the low didn't have, we didn't have any autopilot on the trolling motor. It just had a regular foot pedal trolling motor. So someone always had to drive that boat. Right. And then we used the 60 horse to troll with when I was just getting into trolling and stuff. And we'd, we'd run drift socks out the sides. And so like with drift socks and all that, we could slow down and do all that stuff. But then dad, we found a, it was actually a Lund fisherman, a 1998 Lund fisherman that was for sale at our local Lund dealership. Um, it had a 135 Optimax. And it had the nine nine kicker and all that. Excuse me. And uh, so dad actually jumped into that, and that was like our real first, you know, Lake Erie boat. It was yeah. a eighteen hundred fisherman. Okay. And uh, even with that boat, we had what's motor guides lower than the Tarova? Is it the like the drive the XI three? Oh, you, motor guide or Minn Kota? Minn Kota, sorry, yeah. That's the power drive, yeah. yeah. Power drive. So yeah. we had the power drive on the front of that, but it didn't have autopilot, so we still had right. to drive the boat. One thing about that boat was that I'd never seen it before, but it actually had like a chain. You know, you had your steering wheel, and okay. it had a chain-driven autopilot. Okay, like it had oh, a the chain in there. One. Yeah. yeah, and the wheel would turn and stuff. It couldn't keep up on like real big waves or anything. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it had its like own little autopilot that you'd hook up or you know you'd turn on and all that, and it keep you going straight. Oh, that's but crazy. Ninety eight, man, that was that thing was <laughs> nice. Well, that's probably game changing uh, technology in nineteen ninety eight. Oh yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now we've now we've got the because you have them. I mean the the gps trolling motor is just like unmatched now oh yeah it's so like, accurate <laughs> oh yeah yeah anybody that wants to troll on the lake these days it's like if you want the ease of the operation like you have to have a gps trolling motor yeah oh without a doubt i mean and then like me i go by myself all the time yes yeah i gotta have i can't have can't drive the boat and reel and fish <laughs> no well, and like, so I, when I started, um, my boat came with a power drive as well. So when I bought that boat seven or eight years ago now, I used that trolling motor up until last year. So I used it for six years. Like it would barely push the boat in waves. It would like push it two miles an hour on a flat, calm day. And like, I had to have the back motor up, like any drag, we weren't hitting two miles an hour. But so what I had to do for that, if I wanted to troll by myself, was I would sit on my back transom because mine has that full transom all the way across. I would sit back there with the pedal on my lap and I would push it with my fin- like my hands. And that's how I steered the boat. And then when we had a fish on, I was just like, well, wherever it goes, it goes. Yeah, right. It just, it just, and it would take off to the right and I would be like pushing on it with one hand, reeling in with the other hand. But then like that video that I did this year on how to troll solo – the biggest thing was you have to buy a trolling motor with GPS. Like there is no way that you can do it without having that trolling motor. And everybody that commented on it was like, oh yeah, but you need a GPS trolling motor. It's like you, sh- if you're very serious about fishing on the lake, you should already have it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just like, it's not, it's not up for discussion. Yeah. I- At this point, like there, there are enough trolling motors out there that you can still, you can find a gps trolling motor sub one thousand dollars oh yeah and it, and it doesn't have to be where it has to hook up to your fish finders either 
you know, yeah. you can still have your autopilot and stuff and then not have to, you know, you can right. have Lawrence graphs and a Minn Kota trolling motor, you know, yes. and then it'll work, you know, no matter That's what. That's exactly what I have. <laughs> Is it really? All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like when I had the low, we go up there and stuff. And, and, you know, there were so many days that we probably shouldn't have been out on that boat. That was a, that was a pretty small boat, really. Yeah. But, uh, man, the way we would do it is someone would be driving, usually like dad. Dad would drive, and he'd be sitting there driving. We'd get a fish on. Well, you know, then it was like a little circus because, like, we had to reel that fish in, you know, and he's driving and everything. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, dad, get the board, or I'll <laughs> take the board off myself, you know. But yeah. then when it came to the net and the fish – you know, it was like, hurry up, you know, let go of the reel or the wheel and go net the fish, you know, and then hurry up and get back on driving again, you know. Like he's got one hand on the wheel and the the net in the other hand so he can get up real quick, <laughs> scoop it, and then jump back to the, driving the boat. Yeah, dude, it's like, I mean, I fished with one of my buddies this year. He bought a 25 or 26 foot, like, big lake boat. But it has no sort of, like, autopilot at all. And so he had to drive it while me and his dad were, like, reeling and fish, and then they'd swap or whatever. And it's, like, it made me appreciate the GPS on my boat, even though, like, I mean, it's a 20-foot boat. I can take it on some pretty nasty stuff. I just don't enjoy being out in the nasty stuff. And, yeah. like, man, just the ease of it. Like, I don't even have to run a kicker motor. I don't have to run a big motor. Like, I can run that Trova by itself and i can go out anytime i want yeah. i trolled by myself four five times this year and like yeah. any anytime i caught a fish it was like my dog might as well drive the boat because i <laughs> nobody needs to like yeah. it's just is so easy yeah no bit and then like you know even even then like on the low and then that old one we had we didn't even have when i first got that boat i didn't have any gps sonar either or anything oh yeah and, and, you know, it's funny, like, when you're driving out there and you don't have, like, a point on a map to look at, you know, to, to aim yourself. Yeah. I remember, like, pointing at the smoke stacks in Michigan, you know, the twin stacks. I yep. tell Dad, like, just point at that, you know, that's where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> you know, keep the, keep the boat pointed that direction. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, you have to have some sort of landmark or else you're just going to go around in circles. Yeah. Right, yep. Yeah. No, so I'm then with those boats, like, at what point did you start, like, really dialing in – your walleye fishing well yeah so then like we had the the old lund and we we're learning more and everything and uh i ended up getting rid of that low and then i bought the lund i have now yep and uh and then that just like kind of transitioned the dad maybe like some good jealousy i guess you know it benefited <laughs> us both yeah <laughs> He went out and got the tie and everything too but you know i uh youtube was a huge thing for me like i love youtube i love learning things and uh it is youtube has influenced me a lot there's some people like uncut angling was yes, always a show yeah. i've shown you him that that i always watched and i tell you what he was like it's weird, but it's such an inspiration. Like I'd watch his videos and stuff. I'm like, man, walleye fishing's cool. You know, like that's yeah. what I want to do. I want to be the multi-species angler, you know? Yes. And uh, so that drove me more into the walleye fishing. And we, my local lake, well, one of my local lakes, I should say, has saw guy in it. And yeah. that really was like the start of the whole chasing after walleye going trolling for them because we'd go out and troll for saw guy on that lake almost the same way that we do out on erie the only difference was was like the deepest part of that lake was like seven foot and yeah. you're running shallow shad wraps and flicker shads and stuff like that but i ran the same boards that i have today on that lake you know with the same rods and all that stuff so that's what really started too, other than you know the whole head boat stories and stuff but right. me you know i was going out in that smoker craft that i was telling you about um and i'd go out troll cast 
you know, spend all day to catch some saw guy, you know, right. and then you go up to Erie, you know, and you'd spend six hours and have a four man limit or something <laughs> on a headbutt. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, and it's so addicting. So, and I just couldn't get away from it, you know. I can tell. I mean, you should come up every weekend, <laughs> or I guess every mm. week, whenever you have the chance. I mean, you're always yeah. up here. But I mean, now that you've got the trailer up here, you have a spot that you can comfortably come up and stay every single time, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. The dad had the trailer to begin with. And then uh, and then the wife wanted to come up here more. So then I had to, you know, now we got our own trailer. So <laughs> <laughs> isn't that crazy how that works? Yeah. But, you know, it's like back to that whole YouTube thing, watching them guys learning stuff. Man, I, I was buying books. Um, I remember I read the whole walleye wisdom book from in fisherman, which is like a big old, you know, stack, but <laughs> you know, like that was the thing to kind of learn. It's what I did. You know, it's, I guess it's what helped me with just learn how, what walleyes do. And then, you know, you can, when you listen to somebody talk about Lake Erie walleye movements, you kind of knew it, you know, it helped me know what they were talking about, you know, I right. guess all the movements how the spawn worked why they went up the river why a lot of them would spawn on reefs you know i remember when i was learning that stuff you know they and you know i remember reading that book the in fisherman book and stuff and it's like well why wouldn't they be spawning on the reefs you know they right. i get the river but you know they should be well you know then you find out after you know the more you learn is that oh yeah you know actually majority of them do spawn on the reefs right. Yeah. You know, and only so many of them go up the rivers and stuff like that. You know, you just always heard of the Maumee River run. You're like, yeah. man, I can't believe all them walleyes are just going up that river, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, what's so what's so good about the Maumee River that's not out on the lake? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, not only that, but the population that's on the lake. Like, there's no way all of the walleye in Lake Erie are going up the Maumee River. Yeah, right. Like 90 million of them or whatever. Yeah, not a chance. No, nope. maybe a fraction of that. Yeah, right. No, it's like the Detroit River. You know, you hear, uh, you hear about fish moving from after the spawn or during the spawn. They're moving all the way up to uh, St. Clair. You know, to yeah. spawn and then coming back down. And then you know, same thing with the Maumee and all that. You know, I remember yeah. when I was learning about it, about everything, trying to learn as much as I can. Like people were like, "Oh, the Detroit River." There was never once in my mind I was like that that the reason why there's fish in there is because of spawning. You know, I just right. thought there were walleye in the Detroit River, you know, <laughs> when you first learning that stuff. Some guy, I remember a coworker told me at a past job, he's like, Yeah, my I remember him telling me, my son caught a 34-inch walleye in the Detroit River. I'm like, oh man, I need to go to the Detroit River. But you know, I didn't know what time of year or anything like that. You know? Yeah. I just thought they're a giant walleye in the Detroit River all the time. <laughs> Which I mean, there probably is. There's a lot of like resident oh, yeah. walleye in the rivers too that people oh, seem yeah. to, you know. I, I mean, the the Maumee is much much shallower than the Detroit River, so it pushes a, a vast majority of those fish out back onto the lake. But the Detroit River, I mean, it's there's current running through it. It's always like. I mean, there's spots in there that are 20, 25 foot. So, like, it's not going to drop to nothing like the mommy does and push yeah. fish out. But, like, it, it is super interesting learning about, like, I mean, I, I've only been on the lake for the last 10 years or so. So, like, I haven't, I haven't learned everything that, like, my friends that have lived out here their whole lives and that's what they grew up doing. Like, they could tell me at any point, like, oh, it's the middle of june you want to be here fishing this and like that's stuff that i'm like either i've learned or i'm still learning but like you have to then think about how many different areas of the lake there are to fish there's rivers there's uh -huh. you know the west side of the lake the central lake the w eastern basin it's like uh -huh. trying to follow those fish and like their patterns all the way essentially across the lake it can yeah. get tough Oh yeah. You know, I mean, there's some sort of pattern throughout the year, but like, like you said, like, unless you're like following other people that like you can learn that information from, or like you're taking information that you're learning along with stuff that people are telling you, and then you start piecing it together. Yeah. Right. 
right? You start figuring out why in July, you know, Lorraine and Vermillion so good or, you know, whatever. Right. And, and there'll be and one the, old guy at the ramp that's like, well, it's because uh, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. And then like, but he's caught fish there for 45 years. And it's like exactly what he says. <laughs> like, yeah, it's right. not a folklore anymore. It's like, that's, there are people that know this shit and it's like the oh, Bible yeah. to them. Yeah. It's an addiction, man. Heck yeah. You know, and then, and the thing too, that is crazy is that I think sometimes like there's so many walleye in the lake. And they talk about this, uh, all these fish moving east. Well, you know, it's like, it's more of a, almost like a mega school, you know, they call it a fish. Right. that are all moving east. Well, what's that thing that, you know, here I've been learning more about is that, you know, you got all these fish moving east and, well, they all can't move east, you know, and they all right. develop different patterns. And. You know, just because uh, somebody's catching them out in 50 foot of water doesn't mean, you know, all the walleye are, you know, out in 50 foot of water. You get right. fish that start to develop different patterns. And it's crazy because, like, on different lakes, uh, fit, you know, walleye change. So, like, I guess what I'm trying to say, like, like you know, you might get a walleye in the summer that wants to move up in the shallows a lot more you know, at night and do its feeding. And in the early mornings, you know, they might be around the islands a lot of the year going up even in the 10 foot of water. And and then, you you know, like you're saying, you got fish that live on the reefs all year. You got fish that live in 20 foot of water. But the big thing is like that you still got that mega school, you know, I don't know how yeah. many out of the 90 or 70 million, if there's, you know, whatever, yeah. 50 million of them going East, you know, I don't know, but but no, it's just crazy. I don't know. There's just a never, never ending amount of information to learn. You know, anybody yeah. that's, that they got to figure it out, <laughs> they're not even close. <laughs> no, there's like, you know, you can, there's people that have learned what works for them essentially. And it's like, yeah, like you're saying, they might just be hitting that same, um, like that same, I won't even call it like a species, but it's more of like, uh, a category of walleye that's like yeah. these these certain fish just really like 18 foot of water oh, that's oh, where yeah. they live it's like people it's just like people you have people that love living in a city and then there's yeah. people that like living on the country there's people that work at night there's people that work in the morning like oh, it yeah. just it, you know there uh, that's how i think of it is like oh, there's yeah. so many different kinds of walleye out on the lake that like their behaviors aren't all the same oh without a doubt yeah so like you could and it is crazy because there's a lot of times that you could just be like uh you could be a, a, any joe schmo that brings up an 18 foot boat goes out on a day that's a foot or less trolls two miles and you'll probably catch a fish doesn't matter where you're at oh, you'll catch yeah. something you know i always I, I the thing i've been saying here recently is like um you know, the Western Basin gets slow this time of year. You know, it's it's yes. August. Water temps are up. A lot of shallow water in the Western Basin. Yeah. But there's still a lot of fish out there. And I always talk about how, like, I, you know, like with worm harnesses, if someone new was coming up here and they're like, hey, I'm going out on the Western Basin, you know, can I have some, you know, can you help me out or something like that? It's like, man, go out there and and don't stop until you're marking fish, use your graph, make sure you're marking fish. And I tell you what, like you're going to catch walleye. Now the thing that you're going to run into is how many junk, how much junk fish, you know, do you want to sort? Right. And, and, you know, like those early days, like I was saying of me coming up here, man, I remember like the only thing we ever did was like troll bandits and we could catch bandits all year or catch fish all year on bandits. But like, the thing was, was like, you go out here in the Western basin, you catch a lot of junk fish, a lot of sheephead, catfish, <laughs> and all that. but uh, this time of year. But, yeah. uh, but the thing was, I never even thought about that stuff. You know, when I was getting started, I was so grateful just to come out here, you know, and just be on the lake that I didn't yeah. care, you know, what I was reeling in. And, and we always caught walleye. You know, like it, it just always happened. 
And then now I'm finding like the more and more I fish, you know, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time up here. I'm finding myself want to cha- chase that mega school because I don't want to be reeling in junk fish all the time. You know, I'm <laughs> lazy. And now every time I'm like reeling in, and I know it's a sheephead, it's pumping. And I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh, you know, like, here we go. <laughs> you know, there's sometimes I let it ruin my day. But then I have to remember like, man, back in the day, it didn't matter if I caught a fish. I was just so happy to be out on that lake, you know. But right. and, and that's the stuff I forget when someone asks me, you know, like, hey, where's the fish bite? Hey, I'm going out of this area. You know, can I catch fish out here? You know, you, it might be an all day thing, but, you know, you, you are going to catch fish. There's so many fish in Lake Erie right now. It's unbelievable. Well, and that's the thing, too, is like I think a lot of us get lost in like the we have to catch a limit in the 30 minutes because somebody else did. And like, oh, yeah, I lately, especially for me, just because like the times that I go out now are very calculated because I don't want to waste my time going out. So like because I have kids, so it's like I I can't just like I used to be able to fish three, four times a week where it's like. Now I probably could, but it's like, do I want that argument of like, hey, you've been out fishing three times this week and blah, blah, blah. But also like there, it just makes for a long day if you go out and you don't catch anything. So like now it's like, I just have to remember that there are people in my situation that don't get to do anything. So like, I am grateful for the fact that I get to go out, do what I love to do. And like, it's, it's just, you got to remind yourself like you said like it's you're out there fishing like it's supposed to be relaxing it's supposed to be fun yeah you catch a sheep head and it's like yeah. i always just go you know it's a fun fight like it could be worse i could be oh. i could be working you know like anytime i'm not working i'm fishing it's just like you know that's that's the argument right there is like you could be you could be working oh yeah there's definitely days out there that are grinds um i don't care who you are, everybody has them, you know, yes. there's days that you're going to spend all day, you know, looking for fish. And then the next day you're going to go and you're going to limit out so fast that, you know, you won't even believe it. I, exactly. And, yeah. It just, and you can't take that stuff for granted. You got to appreciate the grind, I guess, you know, like oh, today, for sure. I was out there today. I went out of Vermilion and, uh, and man, I had a grind today. There's just something about today that I just could not get on fish, you know. But everybody has it, you know. Oh, but yeah. I still anybody talk- that tells you no is a liar. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And, and that stuff cracks me up. The whole, you know, like the fishing reports. Facebook has a huge uh, Lake Erie fishing reports page, which yeah. is great. I'm all about that and stuff. But yeah, like sometimes you run in the the guy, you know, the guy that's like, oh, caught my limit in two hours, you know, or right. the best are like, uh, oh, I caught my fish by 10 o'clock. Yeah. And you're like, oh, man, that's awesome. You know, everybody's been there. You know, that's great. But, yeah. you know, you don't know, don't get discouraged by that because you don't know what time them guys got up. They could have been fishing since three o'clock in the morning, too. Right. You know? <laughs> Yeah, that like that's, me, that's a know? lot of stuff that's not uh, disclosed. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, not only that, but also like, you know, there's people, especially during jigging, that people will be like, oh, we caught our, we caught four man limit in a half hour. And it's like, oh, well, then I got to go tomorrow. But it's like, yeah, those guys were out and so were 200 other boats. So oh, like it disturbs, God. it disturbs a school of fish, whether people want to believe it or not, like. There's a reason that you don't run your boards two feet from the boat. That's why you run them 40, 50 feet from the boat, sometimes 120 feet from the boat. And it's like, because you don't want that disturbance of the trolling motor, of your main motor, of your kicker motor, like those fish hear it, they move. And then it's like, you could have been on a spot one day and go back the next day and not catch a fish there. And then you got to move a mile. It's yeah, because like, yeah, that that school of fish just got ran over by a thousand boats that day. Yeah, right. Yeah, not no... just fishermen, jet skis, pleasure boaters. You know, like anybody. Yeah, uh, like one guy I always watch is Ross Robertson, and okay. uh, his stuff's big water fishing. And the thing he always talks about is like marking fish at speed. 
So, you know, like he has his graphs all set up and I do too. I've followed his stuff where, you know, you can run like on my boat, I can run like 15 mile an hour and I can still mark fish. Well, like the whole reasoning behind that is, is that you're trying to catch them fish by surprise. You know, you're going 50 mile an hour, you'll run over them and you'll get them on your graph. But then there's times that you'll stop and there won't be any fish around, you know, like if you got suspended walleye and they're in 20, 15 foot of water, I'll say that this is a Lake Erie thing. If they're in 20 to 15 foot of water suspended, you know, and you run that boat over them, they're going to swim away. You know, they're not just going to watch the boat. Now, like I say, this is a Lake Erie thing. Cause like when I said like my local Lake being seven foot, them fish, I don't know why, but they just do not care about that stuff. You know, well, they probably get, uh, they get used to it yeah Yeah. they condition to it yeah right yeah but and then like and then that's one thing like if you're by yourself you know your boat's gonna scare them fish but yeah like you're saying you got 20 or 100 boats out there at one time you know everybody's casting and trolling it's gonna scare them fish yeah yeah Yeah, keep them out of that area yeah i think that's a lot a lot of this like the simple concepts that people tend to forget about that like it's you know if if you like like for me if i was bass fishing and i started my motor up over like three fish see you later they're gone like yeah they're not gonna sit out there and wait for you to cast their jig on you and go oh i'm gonna eat all (laughs) yeah oh there's a motor here i wonder if they got food and then it's like i drop something in their mouth like that's not what they're thinking they're like let's get the hell out of here now yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and you know, and that's something too. Like, uh, like I always say, like I like running my trolling motor a lot. I actually don't even have a kicker on my boat, but but that's yeah. a whole other. You know, on Dad's boat, we got the kicker and everything. Yeah. But a lot of times, you know, I really find that just running your trolling motor helps out a lot with you yeah. know your catches and everything. And there's this, there's like this thing on Lake Erie, and I don't know why. It, I think it's just like a charter boat thing. But, like, there's guys that, act, you know, really believe that, like, you're running that engine and it's going to attract fish. And, and I've been told that before. Have you ever heard that? I can't say that I have. The only thing I could think about that is that if there's more people running their boats and it just kind of scurries them up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a, bu- a bunch of guide boats that are, just like, running their motors in a circle and then they just kind of trap the fish in there. <laughs> Don't know. Yeah. No, it's like, uh, you know, I was told one time um, about that, that someone said, well, you know, you run your big motor, you run your kicker and all that. So then when you are, troll over fish, it will actually scare them out to your crank. OK, yeah. So that makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. But then, like, it makes me wonder, like, I, I never like just say, OK, yeah, that makes sense or Oh no, that doesn't make sense. I let everybody have their opinions and I really just like to think about things because like that, I'm like, man, if a fish is getting scared, it comes back to that same thing you're saying about bass. If a fish gets scared because you drove over them with a kicker, do you yeah. think they're gonna swim out 40 feet and go, oh, there's <laughs> well, now I'm hungry. <laughs> Eat that sucker. <laughs> Unless it was like a uh, reaction strike. Like if yeah, they're swimming know, and then all of a sudden something right there and they're like, whoa. And it's like, okay, I could see that. But, like, I don't think that there would be enough science to back up, like, oh, yeah, yeah, this, like, it pushes them out to the sides. And then all of a sudden they're just like, it's time to eat. Yeah. You know, and then, like, I think about, too, when someone tells me that, it's like, uh, you know, is it because their instincts are kicking in and they're like, oh, I'm scared and I got to figure out what's scaring me. And the right. only way that I'm going to get rid of whatever's scaring me is to use my mouth, you know. Right. So they're swimming out and they're going, oh, this is the thing that's scaring me, you know. I'm going to yeah. eat it. I don't know, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm that's believer, interesting to think about. I'm a believer in just being as quiet as I can. I'd rather just yeah. sneak right over them fish. Hopefully they don't even know that there's a boat over them or anything. And they're just crankbaits there for them to to eat up or worm harnesses so right well and the thing too with the, with the trolling motor is that like it does disturb a very small amount of water and like yeah. you don't have like your main motor has your prop but then it's also got the exhaust sound coming through it so your prop mm-hmm. is actually pushing that sound 
further out into the water and it's like yeah. i understand with a kicker it has a it has flatter blades to help like keep that reverberation shallower from like towards the boat yeah but you can't beat a trolling motor the only way that you could beat the trolling motor is drifting yeah and making oh, no yeah. noise at all that's the only way you'd be quieter i think than a trolling motor and like a trolling motor you could I feel that the deeper that you go with the trolling motor, the less noise it makes just because it doesn't have like that surface effect of like pushing more water and like chopping it, you know? Oh yeah. That's I, I, I think I'm on the same page as you. I don't have a kicker. I don't need one. Yeah. And I, I would rather just go out when it's calmer and troll with my trolling motor. And I feel like that gives me the best opportunity because I don't have this, loud engine noise oh yeah you know i see it a lot even when perk fishing you know like uh you know when we're running the the trolling motor and we have it in spot lock like the other day you know we were in rough water and rough enough that in our tie that trolling motor was coming out of the water well you know when that thing comes out of the water it makes a lot of noise yeah and i tell you what we'd be on the fish and the second that that trolling motor went out of the water and kicked everything up we'd have a delay, you know, like we'd have a little wall in our bite, you know? So yeah. I don't know. It's all stuff that makes you think, but then like, I'm also the one that I'll be trolling along with my trolling motor, trying to be quiet, but I'll have my radio in the boat blaring too. <laughs> you know? So, so, you know, it's just all stuff that I think about, but I try not to take it very serious either, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll I mean, just like, be jamming, you could definitely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could definitely like lull on that a lot, but at the same time, it's like if you're playing music and like it, it just adds to like the experience of you, you being out there and like enjoying your time. It's like I would assume that sound inside the boat gets deflected quite a bit from like the floor and the carpet and the foam and the hull. So like you could probably hear it. But not at like not if you're trolling like twenty foot of water and those fish are sitting on the bottom. They're not. Yeah, right. Yeah, but I mean, like it's stuff like it's funny because like there's people like you and me having this conversation right now where we're like really diving into all the different noises and stuff, and then you'll have somebody come from like Wisconsin with their boat. They only troll with their big ba- their big motor. They smash walleye and like you know they three guys on the boat they catch their limb in three hours and it's like if we had this conversation with them they'd be like you know what i just did out there but (laughs) it made no difference like and it's you know that's the difference of like being on the lake too much and start really thinking about like why why do i catch fish on this day why do i not catch fish on this day and then you start looking into these little details and you're like you could make yourself go crazy thinking about it yeah like i jammed Edmund Fitzgerald today, and then we caught him, you know. <laughs> and those fish are just dialed on Edmund Fitzgerald. Like it's just it moved that whole mega school from moving east. You know, they came back a little west, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brought on attracted them back over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, it, it is, you know, it's fun thinking about it all. And I I try to really keep a really big open mind about all that stuff there's so many different ways to catch fish out on lake erie it's crazy if you want to go try something new you know that no one else has ever done yeah you know, it's a great place to go to and see if anything will bite um some guys came up to me today some nice guys at vermilion they talked to me and uh you know they were drifting and i'm like yeah yeah you know yeah heck yeah and i'm like oh i'm gonna go trolling he's like well i'm all set up for trolling and everything and and I'm like, oh no, you know, if you're getting them drifting, man, by all means, get them every yeah. day you can, you know, yeah, you know, just because I'm trolling or someone else is trolling or someone else is doing whatever, you know, if you're on them and you're catching them, or if you got confidence in what you're doing, just keep on doing it, you know. Oh it's yeah, just, that's like it gets with people that are like, oh, the jig bite is on. It's like, but there's guys that have been trolling for four months. So like they're yeah. catching fish trolling, they're not gonna stop because people are jigging. Yeah. Or like, oh, the crawler harness bite is on. So you probably could have thrown a crawler harness during the jig bite and caught them the same way. I mean, like probably maybe not as crazy as it gets when you start like, you know, water temperature plays a a 
a factor in what they're hungry for. But like at the same time, like for jigging, you're looking for a reaction bite. When you're trolling, you're looking for a reaction bite. When you're pulling crawler harnesses, like you're you're just triggering these fish to eat. Yeah, right. Nope. It, and it, and it's like I was saying earlier about bandits. I tell you what, like it was the only thing that we had. Like yeah. when I first started going, it was like, oh, I'm. These are supposed to be the best. That's all I'm buying. So, like, you know, I don't know how many we had. Maybe to start out with, like, 15 different colors. We didn't yeah. even know what colors were good. And we caught walleye all year, you know, not even thinking twice. Like, man, we never had a day where we were like, oh, there's got to be something a little better. Right. You know, we were able to catch fish all year on banded crankbaits. Now, right. you know, maybe walleye nation creations work good, too, or, uh, you know, whatever. But that's just what we had. And, and then, you know, you start learning like, well, you know, when June comes, you know, you, you're supposed to downsize April and June, you downsize to these baits and everything. And you're g- going to get more bites or these smaller spoons and, you know, and you're like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. And you go out and, and you do your thing and you catch fish and you're like, man, I wonder if we would have just ran bandits today, if we <laughs> caught them too, right. you know? you know you would or you know there's days you're like i know i would have you know and and one thing that gets me about all that too i don't i i don't know i I, like i said i like to think things through i don't tell anybody that they're wrong but like you know uh like the flicker minnows a lot of guys run 11 number 11 size flicker minnows and they do it because they're trying to downsize well you know you compare that number 11 flicker minnow to a bandit you know there's not much difference you know right. I, mean, I mean that walleye is not going hey that bandit's like a half inch longer you know and i need to eat that number 11 flicker minnow yeah so like i don't know like i that's something i don't know i just i ran i run all number nine flicker minnows when i'm going to run flicker minnows because they're that much smaller you know if i'm going to yeah, have if a you're sm- going to make a change it's got to be a change yeah like I, bandits this big walleye nation uh reapers you know they're a little bit smaller than a bandit they'll dive you know but they're they're real close to that size 11 uh flicker yeah. minnow so you know it's just all that stuff i don't know just think overthinking stuff you know exactly well and I, it's a marketing ploy too to get us uh, to buy more shit yeah <laughs> I, I tell you what if you got a program and like i said like it i'm not saying bandits are the ticket but right. bandits do catch fish, but like whatever you got and you're catching fish, if you got flicker minnow 11s and that's what you got, man, run them, you know, yeah. <laughs> just run yeah. them and, until, you know, and then maybe save up some money and move on to the next thing, you know? Right. The, yeah, and, yeah, try you know, dipsies with spoons if you want to really like switch it up. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's where, yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, like, uh, I, the the worm harnesses are a big thing for me um because i don't have a kicker and this is a really good thing for anybody that's like getting into this you know you can you can go buy your worm harnesses you know you don't have to make them you don't need a kicker and you can go out with your trolling motor and you're going to troll slow you know this time of year you know things change but like in that early or that late spring you know whatever you could troll one mile an hour and your trolling motor is going to last all day. You know, oh, like yeah. mine will last like eight hours trolling at one mile an hour, even if I got to go in the wind, you know, yeah. with harnesses. So it really gives people an opportunity, you know, to come up here and fish without having the kicker, without having, you know, right. you don't even need, uh, you don't even need planter boards, you know, run them things right. out the back of the boat, all that stuff, you know. And that's what, like, the cool thing about uh, worm harnesses is for me. You know, this time of year gets tough for me when I just have my trolling motor when I got to go over two mile an hour, you know? Yeah. It doesn't last as long, but you're like me. I'm not out there for, like, 12 hours. No. (laughs) I mean. Four hours. I'm coming home. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, You know, (laughs) six hours is a good day for me. Trust me, I have days where I'm out there all day. Just yeah. because, I mean, whatever. But uh, the majority of the time, man, I, yeah, I'm done. You know, noon, one o'clock, I'm like, all right, I've had enough. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we'll try again tomorrow kind of thing. Yeah. But those worm harnesses, like, they're so versatile. 
cast them, troll them. I mean, yeah. you can drift with them. Like, it's because you can put them on a bottom bouncer. You can just let them drag behind the boat. Like, I think that that's a really good tip for people that are, and I'm not a walleye professional by any means, but that it's a really good tip that if you're going to come up here and start, you don't need bandits. You don't need planer boards. Like you could start with just worm harnesses. You could buy worm harnesses at any of anywhere up here for like three or four bucks. Oh yeah. Yep. You could buy six of them for $30 or whatever, $25. You could go out and have a whole day with them. Oh yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Because I think a lot of people don't realize that like with the bandits, it's very speed oriented. Like you have to dial in your speed. The depth that they dive is based on the speed that you're going. But like you said, with word harnesses, it's just like you could go a mile an hour. And if you've got a weight that'll take it down there, you're good. Oh yeah. Because like I just did a video on it. You can, you know, a lot of times when I'm running them worm harnesses, I'm, I'm running them suspended. I hardly ever run them on the bottom, but you know, if you're the guy that wants to come up here and you got a tackle box full of bottom bouncers, you know, throw your bottom bouncers on and you can run that bottom bouncer 10 foot down and 30 foot of water, you know, right. Doesn't make any difference. What kind of weight that bottom bouncer is still going to get down there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good tip because it's like, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are always asking you for tips anyway. Well, yeah, right. A lot of people ask just where to go, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll have that, and it's like there are more popular spots throughout the year, but it's like you'll see people out fishing at every boat ramp all year. Yeah. You know, the hardest part about that is is that when guys plan a trip and they're and they and they maybe don't know and they're like like now it's August or September and they're like Yeah. Well, hey, am I tri- I'm I'm staying in Port Clinton, you know, and you're like, oh man, drive to Vermilion. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, make a little trip if you want, you know, if the weather's yeah. good, go check it out. You know, you're gonna, you know, you get out east too, you know. Here I'm giving out all the, but like you go out east, and you know you launch out of Vermilion or you launch out of Lorraine. The big thing that them fish are looking for is, you know, they're gonna be in that deeper water. They're looking for that colder water. And all right. that. And the reason why is because the bait fish are out there. Right. Well, like in the Western Basin, you got to go all the way to the Canadian line, you know, to hit 30 foot. Of, yeah. I was out there the other day. 33 foot of water is Canadian line. Yeah. You know, north of Niagara. You go out of Vermilion and it's like a mile out of Vermilion <laughs> and you're in 30 foot of water, you know. Yeah. So you, you can think about it. It's not going to take you very long to get out to where the fish are, you know. So right. you doesn't take a 30 foot sport craft all the time to, you know, to get out to yeah. Canadian line or anything. Yeah. You know, there, there's a lot of days where, man, I'd take that smoker. Craft. I actually thought about making a video of it, taking that V or the flat bottom smoker craft out there and catch some walleye on the, you know, with the little 25 horse kicker and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like either you make a, 30 minute drive to go to have a five minute boat ride or you make a five minute drive to have a 40 minute boat ride exactly yeah and i'll drive the truck any day you know over Uh, over the what you you're probably getting better gas mileage than me but like i think my my motor is like eight eight or ten gallons an hour at full full wide open throttle and it's like or I just drive my truck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and or, I use two gallons. <laughs> I, it, it, the other thing too is like I I like my boat, you know, and I don't yeah. want it to be like a pile of aluminum by the time I get out. <laughs> oh yeah, especially if it's rough, like and, and okay. out by the islands, like even just boat traffic itself will get yeah. you. No, nope, I I enjoy, you know, it's one I enjoy driving my boat and everything, and I've done stuff that I you know I shouldn't have, but. Like, it's like that, you know, I've launched out of Turtle Creek and drove to the islands and in my boat and I've gone, you know, the one day I did it, I could only go like 10 mile an hour on my way back. Right. Yeah. yeah. So like things kicked up and like, here I am just, yeah. you know, every wave smacking me. I'm going 10 mile an hour. <laughs> and that <laughs> takes me. you an hour and a half to get back. Oh yeah. I wish it took me an hour and a half. <laughs> 
<laughs> You'll have that. Yeah, I was just thinking about them headboats, you know, again. I was like, here we oh, go. <laughs> just smashing through the waves. They don't care. Yeah, a little bit quieter, you know, no two-stroke Detroits or anything. Right? Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true. So then at what point did you decide that you were going to start making the, the TikTok videos? Yeah, you know, it, uh, it's funny because, like, it's been, like, 10 years ago. I started a YouTube channel. And it was called JC Jigs uh, Fishing. And I was in college and everything. And I'm making these, you know, same thing, going saw guy fishing, going crappie fishing, doing all that stuff. And so, like, I don't know why watching those uncut angling guys, I always thought that was just cool. Yeah. Yeah. And and so it motivated me, you know. I bought, that's when, like, there was just a GoPro one, you know. I don't know when that came out, but that's what I had. And, a while ago yeah and that's what i started making videos with and i tell you what it's just crazy it never left i i ended that you know that didn't last long at all you know the jc jigs thing but it, it's always stuck with me you know and i've never just had the time you know or or i was never settled down enough to like to do it right so and then like it's crazy tiktok's just crazy um you know last year i started making some stuff and uh and i really enjoyed it you know one thing too that deterred me of the youtube stuff was i always imagined you know back then in my mind everybody had these like 25 minute videos and i love right. long youtube videos like i yeah. do a lot of people don't but i do and i could never do that and then like i would try and to edit all that was just like there's no way i was like this yeah. is real ruin it for me i can't do it so now you know with tiktok you know you're making a video under a minute you know oh yeah so easy easy to tick or to edit and everything and uh and yeah so it just worked out you know um i'm really lucky my wife she's so supportive and everything and it's like this year it was like end of february beginning of march i talked to her because you know, I, I don't know. I'm a dreamer. And I'm like, man, I'm either going to go and get my captain's license this year and I'm going to take this all the next step. But I also told her, like, I'm 100 percent down to just like going head first in the media stuff. Yeah. You know, I have I have no idea what I'm doing, but like I'm going to produce this amount of videos every week. I'm going to do this, this and this. I got this whole plan and and uh she was cool with it and i told her like every opportunity i have to go to the lake i'm going to treat it like i'm i have a a charter business you know yeah. so on my days off i'm like man i'm i'm going if the weather's good i'm going and and she's been 100% supportive about it and it's allowed me to come up here a bunch and uh and so that's been the whole thing that's been the grind this year just just the whole social media thing. And and I, yeah. I'm having a blast doing it. And I I get hard on myself sometimes over things, but uh but man, all the people that I've met and 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 then I tell you too, like I talk about having an open mind. When it comes to fishing, you got an open mind and you don't set yourself self to anything and you listen to people and, and whether they're right or wrong, you know, you just listen to them yeah. and, and think about what they're talking about because obviously it's working for them you know and you got to figure right. out why but you keep that open mind you'll learn so much you know if you think the guy that only comes up to lake erie once a year can't teach you anything you know you're wrong because right. there's always something to learn keeping that open mind and all that but but yeah i kind of got off but yeah jc jigs was the was the whole start of it and everything and then that's where i've gotten into tiktok and all that Well, and it's all working. I mean, like you say that you're hard on yourself, but like it shows in the growth of it. I think when I first, because I started seeing your videos pop up probably at like the the end of last summer, I think. Yeah. I think I started commenting on them and like going back and forth with you. And then like uh, later in the, later in the fall, I think is when like you started seeing my stuff because I was doing all the hunting stuff. And then we started going back and forth and like, I mean, I just rolled over 2,600 today, but like you're at like 5,600, I think. 
Yeah, I'm at. I'm almost at 58. It's crazy. It's, okay. I'm grow spurt. I don't know why, but but yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, it's it's because you take the time to like do the how to videos to show like that that perch that you caught on the bandit that got what like a, over half a million views yeah it's still growing that's where like yeah i don't know why i'm just on like a little growth thing every day i got people that are still liking that and all that yeah stuff. but, but you i know, mean like, that's how it works like you yeah. like i had a, i had a video a couple weeks ago that was a photography video that i was like eh, this will be fun like yeah, it, it started out, you might have seen it, but it was the one where the guy hits the lens with the camera or with the hammer. Yeah, right. It's like 60,000 views right now, and that got me over 500 followers. So it's oh, like yeah. that, it's just like it takes, it can take one video to pop up like that. And like, I, I mean, honestly, I'm surprised that over half a million views didn't get more. But like, it, oh no, I'm... it's just like, it. it's, it shows in the growth that if you have a plan and you stick to it, consistency on this kind of stuff is huge. The giving people what they want to see is huge. Like, yeah, it's it's funny to see a, a perch on a bandit that's bigger than the fish. Yeah, itself. Right. Like, <laughs> so like that is going to that's entertainment value for somebody and they're going to watch it where like. I mean, you've got a lot of videos that are 10, 20, 30, 40,000 views, and like it's consistent. It's not just like eh, every four months you have one that goes 20,000. It's like it's consistent going through your feed, which I did today just because I wanted to have this conversation. But like yeah. it, it, as somebody who makes longer form videos on YouTube and sees enough growth and in the niche that I'm in, on TikTok, applying the same mentality to that is going to give you just because number one, it's a gigantic platform. People are scrolling yeah. on their phones just mindlessly. And if they're like, oh, I like that. And then they follow you like, yeah, you give people you put you put content in front of people that they like and it entertains them. They're going to follow you. And that's yeah. what helps grow. And like you've done a very good job of that. Yeah, it's the whole thing. You know, it's a lot of things. I. I try to stick to a niche, you know, when I was getting into this, they said, man, make your niche as small as you can, right. you know, and you're going to get the growth that, you know, you're, you're wanting. Well, you know, like, so that's why it's like all Lake Erie content. You know, yeah. I try to just Lake Erie content, the people that are following, I like to think that's what they want, you know? Right. But it it's one of them things too, that like, I've had to figure out how, to expand from that because there's only so you know many guys that are on tiktok that are you know wanting to follow lake erie content and, right and you know the and, and it's everything like i'm always it's it's crazy i'm always just uh thinking about it you know i try not to i never wanted to give off this like oh i'm a bad mofo you know fisherman you know follow me i'm catching all the biggest fish and all that stuff Right. I try to make it fun. I try to make it, you know, cool. You know, that's why I try to kind of do the, the I call it Sundays off the water, usually with the wife, show yeah. off stuff around the area. But yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just crazy. I don't know. <laughs> you know, and, and then it, to get into, it's like TikTok too. They were talking about shutting it down. Right. You know? So then that was a big thing too. Cause, and it's still every day I think about it. I'm like, man, should I be a hundred percent invested in the TikTok? You know, right. I post all my stuff on TikTok and Instagram, but I tell you what, Instagram's just tough. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they have the users or, you know, the people actually on it. Right. Sorry. I keep, but, uh, and one okay. thing too, it's crazy. Like, uh, like on Instagram, for instance, I'll get, all of a sudden I'll get like 10 people that want to join the community or whatever. And, and, and they'll, they'll sub follow me or whatever on Instagram and I'll check them out and there'll be like 10 fake accounts, you know, and you know, they're, they're, they're fake. Yeah. It's hard, hard to see like on TikTok if they're fake accounts or not. Generally they're only fans people. They're trying to get, yeah, get well, their like following up. <laughs> I do, I do try to check, 
you know, I do try to, everybody that follows me, I try to just check it out. I'm always curious. And I do the uh, same I, thing because it might be somebody that's like got a account similar to mine that I want to see. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. like I'm all about supporting other people that are doing the same thing right. that I'm doing. But like I'm always checking and and I tell you what, it's nowhere near, you know, like I everybody on TikTok's pretty real, you know, like yeah. their profile pictures. I don't know. Instagram's so obvious because it's usually some picture of a chick that someone stole. And yeah. then you, you know, whatever, you know, you've seen it, yeah. but, yeah. and it's crazy. I don't know why Instagram is like that. It, and it is such a grind. I don't know if people, you know, egos are a little bit bigger on Instagram, but I know too, that there cannot be that many users either on, on Instagram watching videos, you know? Well, and I think the difference too, is that Instagram pushes big accounts. Like if you go on your feed right now, it'll be, 10 of the biggest people that you follow where like oh, yeah. TikTok, it'll put like i'll be scrolling through and there'll be videos with tens of millions of views and then all of a sudden there'll be somebody has six views yeah right so like it, it will like it tries out everybody's video it'll put it in front of people even if it's a terrible video you'll get 30 views on it just to see if it's gonna if it's what people like and yeah. if it doesn't work then it just doesn't get pushed but if it works, then it just like it can be a nobody and they can have a three million view video. But if it's entertaining and people want to watch it, it has the view duration, they're going to be like, keep it up. Yeah, like, you know, like I was saying, like, should I be investing all my time in the TikTok? And, and I think about that. That's where I'm like, always like, man, what should I be doing? I tried the YouTube thing. And actually, my video on YouTube did great, you know, yeah. which is crazy, you know. But uh, and then I I was posting my shorts on on YouTube also. And the thing that like kind of deterred me from keep doing that is because like I follow people on YouTube, and I enjoy the shorts. But at the same time, like when I'm on my subscription page on YouTube, I'm like, man, I just want to see their main videos, you right, know? Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't even. So like that's kind of deterred me from putting out the shorts also, you know. Yeah. But uh yeah, I don't know. I, I was gonna get on a, a subject about TikTok, but yeah, I, it, it's just all a grind. I don't know, man. It's just I can't remember what I was gonna say about the the TikTok stuff, but you know, yeah, it's just crazy. What do you think's next for you for TikTok? Got any big ideas coming up? You know, it, it's kind of a tough, uh, it is a tough time for me because for me to go east and all that takes a lot of time and all that stuff. So I actually am like thinking about backing off right now, my schedule, and it, it's crazy. I, I've been doing it all year. I, I try to post five videos a week, Monday to Friday. Thursdays are tip videos. but. Okay. Here recently, the tip videos have been going crazy. Oh, that's what I was going to talk about. Okay. One thing about TikTok that's great is that the longer videos are appreciated appreciated on TikTok. Yes. I, yep. I can make a three-minute long video, and as long as I got like a good catch to it and I'm talking about something really interesting to somebody, someone's going to watch that video. But like if on Instagram, they do that like whole one minute. Yeah. Length. That's tough. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and so it's funny. I keep, but like, you know, like I did a video on uh, how to make a worm harness yeah. and it's up to like 70,000 views, you know? I saw that. Yeah. And, and it's, and just to do a little shout out, that is Ross Robertson's design on that worm harness. But, and that's who oh, I okay. learned it. But, uh, but you know, like I post that on Instagram and it's got like a hundred views, you know, it's just crazy. It, and then it comes back to two, like with YouTube, with TikTok and Instagram, when you post them reels, the aspect ratio, what is it? Is it yeah. nine to 16 or, you nine know, 16 is on YouTube. Uh, Instagram's five to four. Okay, or, or yeah, and then so it crops it, it. 
Yeah, because like if I want to post a awesome YouTube video on how to make a worm harness, th- this is me, you know, simplifying everything. My camera's got to be, my phone's got to be tilted sideways. Yes, got to yes, be horizontal. Exactly. Yep. Now, when I want to make an awesome <laughs> video for TikTok, my vi- my camera's got to be vertical. Right. Yep. You know, for it to fit, you know, I can have it still in there, but it'll shrink that picture down or it'll have yeah. black up and black on bottom. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 And- so like for me, when I post, like if I took a video with my GoPro or something and I put it on TikTok, yeah. I put it into my editing software, I flip it sideways and then um, it'll give me like I can fill in the black space so at least it doesn't look ex- like it doesn't make it look like it's just black like when i bring it into tiktok it gives yeah. it like this full nine but nine sixteen fill yeah right where then like i can use 16 by 9 video and make it a 9 by 16 or yeah. 9 16 ratio but like if you try to take the 9 16 put it into youtube as a full length video then it keeps it vertical and like it shrinks that thing down yeah, so right. much where it looks terrible. Dude, I, I think maybe it's just me, but I think TikTok knows when you do that. And I think like Instagram knows oh, yeah. like when you're covering yours up and everything, I think that that's fine. But like when you got black on the bottom, black on top, it's great. I don't know all the stuff that they know what you're doing, but like I think like when you do that kind of stuff, you get less views. Yes, like, for no. sure. If you post a TikTok video on Instagram and it's got the TikTok watermarks, Instagram knows, man. <laughs> like I've branded. They even that. said they had a they had an update not too long ago that said like if you post it with a shorts watermark or a TikTok watermark, it will not get pushed. Yeah, and, and I've had it where like you'll get none, and then I'll go like a week without i know things are low you know but uh but you know like if you're just getting into this stuff and you want to do these like short videos and everything that's the stuff you got to keep up on you really got to watch like what the algorithm's doing like right right now like i said how to videos i posted how to video this whole year every thursday and just now my how to videos are like going through the roof which i'm about i'm like heck yeah so yeah. I'll get more of them out, you know, like next week, that might be all I do. It's just how to video, you know, but might as well. that stuff you got to keep up on. And then like, I'm always like Googling, uh, you know, what's the TikTok algorithm. There's some right. of that stuff that is just like, a, you know, whatever, some dude that's trying to sell his account. Yeah. And then there's some of it that you listen to. And, and, you know, it makes sense. You're like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, right. that makes sense. I've been seeing more of that, you know, yeah. like the how-tos, you know, when I'm on my TikTok scrolling around, I'm like, oh, there's a lot of how-to videos recently, right. you know. That's the time when you should be posting how-to videos right. and stuff yeah. like that. It's crazy yeah, how all right. that stuff works. I know, I agree, because it's more like right now, a lot of my duck hunting stuff that I'm posting is starting to get more traction because it's – hunting season starts in a month so it's like people are getting more geared up for it and it's like that's all the stuff that's starting to do well for me we're like exactly yeah like when i get into i i'm curious because i didn't push it too hard last year in october november you know all winter i didn't do hardly any videos and this year i plan on like like I said, I might slow down and do like three videos a week or something like that or or whatever I can do. That's when right. I say I'm too hard on myself because I'm like, I got to put five videos out because I've been doing it yeah. all year. Haven't missed a day, you know. <clears throat> but, yeah, that's where like this winter I might slow down. And I'm looking forward to see what happens if uh, if my stuff slows down because all the charter boats will be out of water. Everybody right. be their boats away you know all that stuff so i'm gonna find out you know well and then you can use that i mean it'll be uh it'll be interesting maybe you, like if it slows down then you can say like well then when i'm in the off season i just take less time you know i just put less effort into it 
and then you just kind of let your old videos kind of run but then if it stays the same then you're like well then maybe during the summer i backlog i film a lot of extra content and then i post yeah. it throughout the fall and then it's like maybe that's the the option but like instead of trying to do that right now without knowing then you can go through a, a fall see what happens and then you can make you can adjust for next year yeah like yeah. and and that's where i always am thinking about like what should i be doing should i be focusing on tiktok because it's tomorrow tiktok could be over it seems like right. you know no idea nobody but, knows but it's like should i be backing off my tiktok videos to two or three a week right. and be really trying to make a youtube video you know i don't know if i could do a youtube video every week but, you Stuff. know, like something like that, you know, <laughs> once a month and then do like the three uh, TikToks or something, you know, to promote, right. you know, what's going on or or really stick to some of my more quality stuff. But then I call it quality, you know, I don't, you know, it's crazy. Like I it, it's funny, like the boat driving videos are a filler, you know, for yeah. me, you know, easy. Here's a sunrise. There's a sunset. You know, here's some slow motion waves. Yeah, and, and there for a while I was like, man, you know, like I maybe I should stop posting those because maybe it's not the quality that people, you know, people want to see. And yeah. then all of a sudden, Lund Boats is getting a hold of me, and they're like, "Hey, Joel, can we use some of your uh, some of your stuff?" I don't know if you saw this or not, but they're like, "Hey, can no, we I use?" Your stuff? And they followed me on Instagram. I was like, "Dude, thanks for the follow." And they're like, "Yeah, you know, can we use some of your stuff?" I'm like. Definitely, you know. <laughs> and then the next day or a couple of days later, they're shooting. They got they took one of my boat videos, a slow motion boat video of waves crashing and the sunset and all that. And they put it on their uh, their page, you know. That's so I'm so like, cool. I don't know what the heck I'm doing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, and this thing too is like it's you never know what's gonna happen, so it's like you might as well just keep yeah, running just, with it, see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and then you just got to take it one day at a time because you post a video and, and it's just one day because the next day there's going to be another video. You know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I like to end these with asking a question. If you had to pick, if you if you could pick up another hobby, what would it be? Oh, dang. Um, Another, you know, I'm I'm a big hobby person. And. I've I've done everything almost that I've wanted to do. Uh and it's funny, I always just come back to fishing. I've I've given stuff up and just come yeah. back to fishing. But I really love uh boats. Um I love all fishing boats, um, Lunds, Aluma Crafts, Smoker Crafts, whatever. And I always thought it would be cool to restore, like if I had unlimited money, you know, funds. Right, yeah, yeah. Like restore old fishing boats and uh, maybe sell them, keep them, you know, or do that kind of stuff. You know, I'd say that restoring yeah. old fishing boats would be cool. Like old star crafts and Chris crafts and stuff like that. Whatever, man. Like yeah. that, we had that 98 one that I know that's not like crazy old, but, uh, but that thing needed some work. Like it needed a new transom and some new foam and all that. But, Dude, it would have been awesome to just take that and restore it, repaint it, make it look new again, you know, all that. Yeah, I love boats. I, you know, really, if I had unlimited funds, I'd go out and buy all the boats that I ever wanted. Yeah. You know, like, I want to try a tiller so bad. Like, I just, I love tiller boats. Yeah. And I'd love to try, like, a long pro guide on Erie. But I know oh, yeah. I would get wet. You know, like, <laughs> that's the trade off. I, which is fine. I get wet now, but like, there's times like I'm behind my windshield or oh, even yeah. dad's windshield and I'm looking behind me. We're in some big waves and there'll be waves just crashing. Yeah. And you'll look behind you and all the waves are going, you know, splashing the back of the boat. And you're like, man, that's where I'd be sitting if I was in a tiller, you know? Exactly. <laughs> Standing too. Yeah. You yeah. just get destroyed. But if I had all the money in the world, I'd be buying all kinds of boats, restoring some. I'd be buying new ones, you know, whatever. But yeah, it'd be yeah, super cool. Yeah, buying boats, restoring them, selling them, doing that kind of stuff would be awesome. That would be cool. Well, I appreciate you coming on, buddy. It's uh, 
It was a pleasure to have the first guest for the season three be you talk about fishing while we're still in fishing season. And yeah. uh, anybody that doesn't follow Joel on log dog fishing, is it log dog fishing on everything? Yep, yep, yep. Log dog fishing on everything. I, and then if you want to come uh, on Facebook, it's just Joel Clements. You can follow yep. my Facebook page too. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you coming on. No, man, this is awesome. Thank you.